Hey, profile? Oh my god, the, the sunsets here in Godridge are just crazy. Wow. We have some photographers that go down to the beach every day and take pictures when the sun's coming up and when it's going down and uh, share it on this, this group, and a local group. And I've been sharing some of them. They're on my profile there lately, and they're just amazing bright colors. You, would, you wouldn't think it was real. It's just such an orange, bright, bright orange, red. They're just amazing. Yeah. So you did the Aurora Borealis last week. I remembered when I saw it once. Oh, yeah? And it was just incredible. Incredible. Yeah, to sit there under the stars and watch it is just amazing. But there's some pretty cool videos on YouTube you can watch too and get the gist of how it is, but nothing like being in person and watching it. Yeah, so you don't get any out that way, eh? I guess you're a little bit south of that spectrum of... Like, yeah, there's a lot of uh, Timmins, north of Timmins, northern Ontario, Canada, definitely... Yeah, Alaska and all those fun places. So yeah, uh, Donna, you were here last time. You got to see a little bit of basic strokes there, and um, yeah, yeah, definitely uh, like to just keep it open tonight. If you guys want to pick my brain, like I said, in any way, any particular stroke that you want to see, or um, th anything that you're struggling with. I know what I'm struggling with, but it's going up a bit is the peony oh yeah it's it's those dolphin nose strokes right that's what i keep telling everybody is just keep try practicing those comma strokes and then daisy strokes and then sliding it a little bit more and a little bit more and uh it'll come it'll definitely come i can show you guys again today if that's what you want to see like we got the big lake here but and we we had one uh torno tornado about 10 years ago that hit us really hard here in Godridge, which was really weird because we have a big cliff and it would have to ride up the cliff and get over the cliff to get into town. So it was really a freak of nature for this to happen here. Yeah, because uh, we're one of the, the few places, I don't know where else in the world does this, but when you have a sunset, you're down on the beach, you can see the sunset, but then if you drive around up to the top of the cliff, cliff really quickly, you get to see the sunset again. Oh, so you get to watch it twice so it's kind of cool but like I said that cliff is quite high right so for a tornado to get up over it usually it would stop it eh? so yeah there's been scary weather um, yeah the peony I wish you would have jumped on my last rose class there um, like I've uh, the extra practice area as well. We practiced on paper as well before we did this project. And the simpler roses, and then we bumped it up slowly, getting a little harder, a little harder until we got to that peony. And there was very, very similar strokes that we carried through. So I was trying to show you guys in some of these roses that the very, very middle of the rose is often some of our small little buds, right? So if we start practicing the smallest area first, and then slowly, you know, get bigger in our traditional couple layers of roses, you know, where they layer, like you got three or four layers, you can keep them open, or we can close them with that little closing stroke, but leaving them a little bit open too, right? So the only thing you're missing here is this little closing bud in the, in the center, right? So trying to get a little bit more, you know, harder and harder, a little at a time. So that was a really good project that um, I have just 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 did. Okay. So there's definitely uh, an option to still jump on that one and get another one. There is a couple rose projects that I have done that uh, definitely will help you again, right? But um, yeah, I can kind of show you again here while we're here. I'm just trying to find a 12 or 16, I guess, will work. And I'll just put some red.
Your piano bench is looking good. Yeah, I'm getting all the uh, first coats of uh, sealer on it right now. Uh, that one got let this dry for a little while while I'm busy with you guys and I'll probably get another coat on before the end of the night so it can sit and dry really good over the night and uh, then I can start putting them, the hinges back on and yeah it's the first time I've tried to do anything like that and then I thought oh I'm gonna put some stripes on the spindles of the legs and I'm like oh my god that was not easy at all you think that roses are hard <laughs> These little spindle stripes that I put on there, I tried to make them small and then all of a sudden they got bigger and bigger and then I was going back and trying to touch up with my other color again and oh my god. But I think I got them looking as good as they're going to be. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah, I've added, I added to them since the last picture that you guys didn't get to see that yet. So with the closing strokes is usually those little opening areas that really help. All right. So we have our little traditional rosebud. Right. That's the basis of the very middle of it. All right. And then when we're doing our open bud, open like bigger roses or bigger full bloomed flowers right you're definitely going to make more layers you can make it simple and just have a couple layers right so the bigger you want the more layers you're going to come out right Mandy can you zoom in any? yeah a little better yeah let me see if I can get you a little closer. Yeah, that's good. All right. And then getting some other layers in there. All right, it's always good to brick layer things. Makes it look a little bit more interesting. Right. Most of the peonies have like a center point, like where you're bringing them in the center, as opposed to out. Right. So just building, you know, the typical, we can do this with our poppies or any pretty little flower that we can, you know, we're making double tiered, right? Make a little easy center or, right? So when you're coming into the peony, you're wanting to bring in those little strokes to start you off in the center. You can make them wiggly, you can make them smooth. All right, so I'm definitely going over my outside petals here a little bit. But um, I'm making this pretty small too. Okay, so it's not a big deal to kind of go over and fix things a little bit. Only paint, you can always go over it. Yeah, so I went and dirtied a little bit of my way here. All right. So it's being able to really get that brush over to the tip and not use the back end right so this is one of the things that i've been playing around with for years too is you know manipulating that back corner up out of the way all right and then again you're going to do maybe a layer that's going to come out and then you also have layers that are going towards each other, right? So instead of coming out, you're coming in. Right? So this is pretty small, like I said, we're getting really tight here. And just kind of depending on which way you want to go. Right, you want to bring some of them all in 
instead of out. I need a lot more practice to, just trying to use the tip and not use the whole brush. Yeah, yeah, coming in. And I, that, I got a free video on my YouTube, too, that you guys hopefully saw, the Dolphin Nose Rose, where I did the whole peony style with just all these dolphin nose strokes. All right, and so it's just like your lazy daisy. You're coming over to the side where you have your dark on one side and your light following through, but you're adding a little bit of a chisel stroke. Right. Slowly you're gonna get yourself a little bit fancier. You can put a couple wiggles in that stroke. Okay. Then as you're getting more and more looser with it, you can start rolling now that I was just gonna say it's like a ribbon. Yeah, right? So they're all the same, but they're just getting a little bit bigger or a little bit fancier. But starting off with just that, just simple ones sometimes is all you need is to get going. And then right in the very middle, definitely is where your closing strokes are. But see my gradient wasn't up high enough. So I went and pushed my red up a little higher. Coming around and then scooping it around. So these little dolphin nose, they're, instead of coming straight down, you're coming around in a little bit of a curl. All right, so you're just bringing it around a little bit more sideways instead of down. Okay. Sounds more like a C stroke in there. Right, and then being able to flip those, that the stroke in, and then curl it. Right, so they're all derived from the dolphin nose. Okay. That helps a lot, thank you. Yeah, and then pulling it out like straighter, you don't have to have the little tick. You're just coming straight out with like a, a teardrop. And then again, that scoop. So it's almost like a sideways stroke instead of it going. Looks like a, it looks like a heart. Yeah, instead of going up and down, you're spinning it sideways. Paper is dry. All right, so this is how all these little strokes are and coming around the bud. I didn't put any floating medium on my plate yet. All right, so it's being able to get those curls. And then when you're coming around, you're doing it in different directions, all right? following it around the circle of, of the center of the, the peony all getting in closer. So depending on how wide you want to go, like how small you want to go, right? You can go a little bit wider. Just like we are going on the out, but we're going in. And then there's a, a, that center where you have your strokes in both directions. Right, so hopefully you have space. So you have some coming in and some coming out all the way around your rows. Okay. And then right in the middle here is where you're closing them together. Very pretty. You see what I mean? Like getting those right in the middle of those two strokes there? Yes. So that's where you're changing direction, and that's where I like getting ribbony because then some are going this way, and then some are going this way, and some are going <laughs> this way, right? So it really helps make that petal look like it's flipping and dancing and very delicate, right? With the wind. It makes it look feathery. Yeah. 
Yeah, very nice. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so like I said, that's like a quick version of it. You can get uh, the sheets and stuff like that off that project. I have more street, more breakdown of it. Okay. And then, of course... What, what is that project called, Mandy? Uh, just a variety of roses. I okay. really didn't name it anything too exciting. Okay. <laughs> but it should be right at the top of the list of the projects there because my most current ones are at the top. Okay. And, um, yeah. Definitely try to have more space is, is the key, right? We try to fill it up too much. Yeah, you don't want to put too many petals in the center. Yeah, because then you start hitting the last one behind it more, right? Yeah. So the more space you can give it, the more you'll have less problems with hitting them. But then again, if you guys know me, I'm always into fixing things, right? If I feel like I it's all dry and there's something that I don't like, you know, I can always go and grab a little bit of white you know, by itself with some floating medium. And accentuate the chips of the petal. Yeah, the edges that aren't, you know, as bright. You don't necessarily have to do them all, just a few here. Yeah, and just the center ones usually. Sometimes I'll go and just kind of play with them just to brighten them up a little bit. That made a big difference. Yeah, or if you're not enough depth, you can do the same thing behind right and add a little bit of shading you know where you need it too if you don't have enough depth in anything all right so everybody's always thinking that they have to get it all in one stroke and be perfect and be done with it but you know definitely sometimes we don't have enough definition behind a, a pedal you can always go behind it and Add it in there. See that one? I didn't have any definition yeah. in there. Oh, I'm gonna have to practice just trying to lift my brush to do it on the very one yeah, side. Yeah, do that. The complete um, dolphin nose rose right from the beginning. Right, I go right around the outside, make a big circle. And I started off with as big as I can get it, and then I start tightening it up, making it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until I'm just like getting right in there. So yeah, check out that, that little exercise there that I put out for the dolphin dose rose too. That'll give you a nice little practice. And then do it in both directions, because being right-handed, we're always gonna be easy to do it the same way I'm doing it right here, right? But trying to do it the other direction is a little difficult so whatever direction you have more harder time then definitely spend more time and definitely trying to do them sideways and you know not only up right you're practicing in all your directions without moving your page that'll loosen you up more the more you feel comfortable doing these strokes in all okay. the different directions Right. And then different size brushes. Sometimes we can do better with one size brush than the other. So try to make them with a 10, try to make them with a 12, 16. Like you'll find your favorite size brush where it seems to work for you. And then as soon as you get the connection with one of those brush sizes, then push yourself to practice more with the brush size you're having a hard time with. Okay. Makes sense. You know, so. That's what I would recommend. You see that other little video? I did the uh, little rosebud. Tiny on a size six. You see all my little doorknobs? Oh boy, they're cute. Oh, those are nice. Are they cute? And those, yeah, oh, with a size six. Very nice. They should sell well for you. Yeah, well right now I've been advertising, like if people don't want to refinish the whole piece, maybe they just want to change the knobs to give them something different. So yeah, I just started advertising it in my local groups around town that I'm going to be doing more furniture. Very nice. 
Yeah. So again, me being a nail tech, I did have a little bit of experience. But I'm telling you, my I wish I'm back in nail tech again because I never did roses this good back when I was doing nails. I just from all these years of playing and pushing it and practicing it, and then once I got it big, then I was like, oh, now I know what I was doing wrong back then, right? So I've been able to uh, really bump up my small painting more too well, just it must be a lot harder to do the smaller surfaces than it would be to put it on a something bigger like yeah on, like on a nail or on a small knob yeah little keychains or you know anything that you want to do tiny what size brush did you use what size six okay or if well, you want to do like little jewelry boxes i picked up a couple of these to play around with uh, one day but never got around to it <laughs> you know they make really nice gifts right so sometimes we want to make things tiny you know you got to really practice getting that brush strokes down a little at a time so go 10 8 and then do it keep practicing and then you'll get down to that six so, and then my full my I got a practice program all on tiny painting right so you want to really practice all the strokes with the size six and eight, then that's part of my ultimate package deal program. So in the one stroke practice program, that's where I have all my, the beginner stuff, like not necessarily beginner, but I mean, if you really want to break down the stroke practice, my beginner rows, but the boot camp here has the, the extra peony and more advanced leaves. That's, the great series that if you didn't that upgraded my whole program and oh, then okay. and then my rose practice and these you can jump on any of these separately you can get them in, as a downloadable choice too you can get my beginner rose program right that really breaks down all the, the dolphin nose slowly for you Okay. And then, like I said, the boot camp, we bumped it up again. And then the um, in the downloadables in the, or in the project library. So you'll see that that's the rose course right there. And then in the projects. I could, this one here, the peony and the mum. I was inspired by my couch. So that one there too has more advanced yeah. stuff in there as well. And then the rose vase, this is one from Donna that we did. So I got the step outs in both colors there. So any of those will definitely help you as well. Okay. And lots of fun stuff here. Yeah, just keep hitting load more and more will come. Uh, this was a very simple beginner one. Uh, not my best for advancing. Good for beginners. But yeah, I would say the peony and the mom would be a great choice. And then okay. right at the top here, oh, there's the variety of roses right there. Okay. So I would jump on those two. Okay. And then I played around too with flower bouquet. There was some roses in there too. That's a great project. Maybe you haven't seen in a while that I've done. Okay. What was that one that you were talking about earlier? The project that you said you showed me the canvas of it. Yeah, that's the variety of roses. Okay. Yep, okay. it's right in the downloadable page. As soon as you see paint projects, it's the third one in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, lots of fun ones here. The hydrangeas we bumped up to, it was a simple one, and then I bumped it up to a little bit more advanced. There's some fun tricks in that one. 
The Friendship Reese has lots of extra practice in it as well. That's like a two-day course because I, I put the practice and the project. So we're practicing on paper a lot through the videos. So anything that says practice and paint, I have extra video in there for getting together on the paper. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you learn. You know, that's, it's all part of playing and practicing and learning mistakes and then learning how to get out of those mistakes is sometimes more valuable. <laughs> Don't think I think that's again. more valuable than anything, learning how to correct your mistakes. You gotta. You, like, you have to struggle a little bit, like the peony, right? You have to struggle, and then you, your eye starts to see, oh, that's the difference. That's what I'm doing, or that's what I'm missing. You know, I think the more we struggle sometimes and then be persistent about trying to find the, re the way to make it look better, uh, you gotta you gotta play. You can't just watch. You gotta... You gotta get the brushes out and mess up and then compare again and dig in and get paint all over yeah yeah <laughs> definitely well yeah. thank you very much bandy i enjoyed that and you helped me so yeah I'll thank you try those tricks and i'll jump on your site too yeah all my projects are going to help continue to advance you so okay. and even some uh, that you think oh that's not really my style but it's just try to see the the value of the tricks and tips that are being taught and then once you learn those tip tricks then you can apply them to whatever you want right so even through the drawing and design certification there was like 16 projects we had to do when i looked at them i'm like oh do i have to do that i was like oh that's not really my style i really didn't want to do that but then once I got pushed into it and I started doing it, I was like, oh, but that's a cool trick. And then I'll use that somewhere else. So yeah, as long as you can keep your mind open to the learning, right? And uh, all the different ways of doing things. And then once you start getting all that under your belt, then you that's how I find you can get loose and, and really enjoy yourself and you feel confident, then you can loosen up. If you're struggling, if you're feeling scared, you can't be loose. And that's the biggest thing I keep hearing all over the place right now. Loose, loose, loose. That's the big term of the time. I'm like, what's loose? Because loose can be messy if you don't know what you're doing. Mm. Right? So get confident and then you can start rocking and rolling and, and it'll come a little easier for you. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a good evening. Yeah, you and too. Thanks again. Thank you so much for popping in. I'm going to go back over and put another coat of Verisane over my furniture pieces and call it a night. <laughs>